The day of judgment is every day you are judged. Why? Because your individualized self-consciousness is required to perform mm. and express you. Oh, what are you, thinking you are? And that's why we are all an expression of our own individualized thoughts. Mm. Our individualized self-consciousness constantly is required. Mm -hmm. I live in my individualized self-consciousness mm. and can't do anything about it. And that's why if I want to change anything, I got to reform it by reframing it in my mind. Mm. Okay, read the next point. Separated from your body of flesh and the material world. Woo! Good. Um, Prophet Kelly, what would you like to say about that? Because see, you got to separate from that body of flesh and the material world. That cannot be your truth. Your truth has got to be the state of the soul. Yes, you have to know that you're more than this body. I love that when I found out this body is not me. That became my mantra. This body is not me. I am not caught or held in captivity by this body. I am beyond that. I am a part. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. I am simply housed in this temple because I so choose to it right now. But when I get ready, I'll get ready to move out. And when I do get ready, I do that. I move out of this body and do what I have to do and then come back in the body and do what needs to be done. So I have a resting place, if you will. But this is not mm -hmm. me. I can separate this, myself from this, when I choose, because I'm not bound or limited by this, because really, wow. I'm spirit. I'm just on earth. In a mashanda. A heavenly, I'm, what do we say? I'm, I'm, I'm in earth, having a heavenly, I'm, I'm on, I I'm am. a spiritual being, having earthly experience. Yes. yes, and that's why you've got to begin to understand that as spirit, we are larger than our facts mm. if we choose not to believe the facts. Mm. See, you as prophets and seers mm. always have to work miracles. Mm -hmm. And you do that by going within. Because see, if it is contrary it is what? Temporary. temporary. <laughs> you need to write that yes. down. That, that, that needs to be typed in. If it is contrary, it is temporary. If it is contrary to the truth of the I am statement that is in you, it is temporary. Now I want you to type that in. Because see, God wants you to understand how to move the contrary out of your situation. Okay, read the next point. How rich are you subtracted from your body, your material possessions and worldly honors? Are you rich towards God? See, now that's the key. You got to subtract from your body and material possessions and your worldly honor, you got to subtract all of that and tell us what you're worth. Mm, that's good. And that is the true assessment of your value. A Jew once was telling a story of a man who went before the king, and the king knew the man well. The king said unto the guy, he was a rich man, said, how much are you worth? The guy told him, oh, I'm just a few thousand dollars. He says, you're lying. You own all of these houses and lands. You have money stored up. You have a thriving business. He says, tell the truth of how much you're worth. He says, only a few thousands gave him some number. The king became wroth with them and threw him in jail. Came back to him a year later or so and says, now tell the truth, how much are you worth? He told him still the same figure. He says, why would you say this, knowing it would put you in captivity? You didn't tell the truth. He says, yes, I did. Because I'm only worth what I have given to God that you could not take away. But all that other stuff you were able to take away. So I was not worth that. 
See, and this is where we've got to make sure we are rich towards God. Say with me, I am rich, I am rich towards God. Towards God. <laughs> Say it again. I am rich towards God. Okay, let's look at Luke chapter 12, verse 16 to verse 22. Reverend Run, begin reading. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto them, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided. See, now right there, his individualized self-consciousness was required. Mm. Every one of us will demonstrate whether we are wise or a fool. If you are a fool, you get to live in desire. What is hell? Hell is a place where you are on fire with desire. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's a state of consciousness and it becomes your state of being. See, the whole thing about fire that burneth, um, desiring water, a thirst that can't be quenched, that's all talking about desire. And that's why we want to propose the question could it be that some of you are in hell dreaming you are on earth? Take it there, <laughs> Because you live in constant desire. See, it is not the will of God that you live from paycheck to paycheck and say, I owe, I owe, off the work I go. That is hell. Living in desire instead of living in abundance. Mm -mm -mm. abundance is of it is the will of God for you to live in abundance. I love it. I come. Why did he come? I come. Why did you come? Just say everybody say, why did you why? come, Jesus? Why? Why did you come, Jesus? That you might have life. Now say, how am I supposed to have life? How am I supposed to have life? More abundantly. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. If you're not living the abundant life, then it could be a signal that Jesus has not come. Because if he has come in you, he will come through you. And he will come through you in life and that life more abundantly. Okay, so verse 21, read on. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. See, you can have a whole lot of money oh. for yourself. Come on. But how much money have you put into the kingdom? Are you rich towards God? Have you put emphasis on developing the soul? Have you put emphasis in expanding your education? Have you put emphasis in developing your mind or your state of being towards God? And that's why when you start looking at certain groups of people, poverty is a managed condition. Teach. It has been systematically strategized. People live in poverty because they buy into a system. And one of the things you're going to find is where you find poverty, you find ignorance. Where you find Poverty, you find immorality. Mm 